two, one. You're live. We're live. We should we should dance a little. Let the people show up while we pour our drinks, anyway. <laughs> oh, you know what? This is what we're gonna do. Mm. I've changed. What now? <laughs> I've changed my drink choice. If I'm being completely honest. What'd you do? I'll give you guys a tenner if you can guess what I'm drinking. G and T. Gin and juice. Well, G and T it is. And I got the actual gin and tonic glass from Ireland, Dublin. My sister's. Ooh, like, that's lovely. Carm, you're drinking yes. coffee, so you're boring. D, what are you having? Same as last time, but only because um, I didn't finish the bottle. So we're back. <laughs> Spritzer, wine, and That's ice. where we're at, finishing the bottle. I can't say I have that problem in this house, but uh, <laughs> we'll leave it there. Okay, let's get started. People start joining us. Um, again, this show is all about you guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit us in the comment section. Tweet us at us. Tweet us at us. Got a little echo. A little. Just a little. Really? I don't you know hear what? it. You know what, Kat? I think grab your headphones again. Do you think? Is it a pain? No, it's right here. Okay, yeah, let's do that, I think. No, I think it's, it's not a pain, but you are. You know what? It's 11 o'clock at night. That's why I'm drinking coffee, so. Hold on, no. Coffee. Is that echoey anymore? I don't hear an echo at all. Okay, it just I'm... went as you went. You put, uh, just put them in. Okay, don't put them in. We good. Yeah, not putting it in. Um, okay, so. D's the producer. Yeah, Dee's the producer now. Uh, welcome to episode two of Wine and the Tea with Carm Candy. I'm your host, Kaylin Khan, really not the host of this show, uh, Diana Matheson, Carmelina Moscato. Um, a little bit of a recap. So our first segment, technical difficulties to say the least. Then we started to thrive. And then I, <laughs> down, I figured out how to download it. So that was like the next issue is... I had to pay to increase. Anyways, long story short, we got it downloaded, and now you can find us on our YouTube page of Wine and the Tea with Carm KD if you type that into YouTube. So if you can't catch us on here, because we're very bad at letting you know the time, okay? <laughs> All over the map. We'll, we have to get better with that. We genuinely, genuinely have to get better with that because it's not good enough. And I'm going to put my hand up. I'm still in my shirt from last night, okay? <laughs> I posted this on Twitter and then I just realized like hey, look, it's now the next day. So we will get better on letting you guys know what's that kind of is it ripped or is it clean? Like is it good? The shirt. Oh, smells <laughs> it. To be honest, I just bought it, so it shouldn't smell bad. Um but <laughs> I do have two small kids. Um, so okay, anyways, we're very comfortable around each other. It's all yeah. Good. People are rolling in. So again, uh, if you didn't hear us uh, because we didn't let anyone know the time <laughs> of this particular live, uh, we just came on and wished us the best. Hit us in, in the comment section because um, we love hearing from you. So again, going back to our first show, went live on YouTube. I did do a quick check before I came in. We've had like hundreds of people view our first episode, which is incredible Ooh. because obviously we started this really. In my mind, I drank too much wine, and I thought Dee had asked me about why we were starting this podcast, but that was really not the case. Um, so we obviously recapped the first match of Kat and Dee's taking up Dee. We can see your phone, okay? You can take a screenshot, Dee. We can see. I was going to put on my story. Ooh, put on your story. Um, okay, and we also, we also promised everyone that this show is going to be 20 minutes. First episode, 20 minutes. <laughs> first episode was 50, so <laughs> you're welcome. That's all I have to say. Um, I do want to do, obviously, a quick little recap. Carm, a lot has happened between our first episode. You are now a head coach. You're over in Europe. You got your ring light working. <laughs> and you also have your first win under your belt. Tell us about that. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the support from the sisterhood. Cheers with the coffee. No, but honestly, I'm loving this uh, new head coaching role, FC Norshalem, fantastic club. We are in a town called, you would read it for room, but it's called Fawum. And uh, we're just outside of Copenhagen. It is, uh, the, honestly, the Danish culture is absolutely beautiful. And the girls and the women that I'm working with are so open. And I'm just really enjoying the experience. So we're on session number 10, week number three, coming right up. And we had our first win. Yeah, we were down one nil. We got a little bit done on a corner, got run right back on a corner. And then we played, uh, we scored an open play on an attacking transition that we had been working on. So it was so fun. And I'm loving every minute of it, truly. Okay, so my first comment, you sound like John Herdman, and I'm here Thank for you. it. I love it. I think that's a compliment, and I like it. People, if they don't know this about you, you're the most organized person when it comes to coaching, and you really, 
you really leave it all out there. Like you're the hardest working person when it comes to coaching. And we can say that about uh, a lot of people. Um, obviously, re I think mm, as well. Absolutely. We go. I don't want to touch on it because I'm going to save this for next. Yeah, that started off like really special about Karen. <laughs> you're the hardest working, but then you kind of watered it down by saying, "But so are a lot of people." <laughs> Everyone, everyone's really hardworking, so no. it's just kind of common. No, 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 no. If you would have let me finish, I want to talk about. Right, oh, I'm not I'll go back to post it. No, the, the 2012, you look at a lot of us from that 2012 team and we're all like smashing it. But Carm, you in coaching, one of the first females uh, to collect, it was, is it coaching A or coaching, what is, what's the actual title of it? Well, it's a UEFA A. I mean, the highest you can get is a pro, um, which I'll be going for shortly. As soon as I get my feet under me, I'll be doing that in 2022. Going for my pro license. Can't wait. God, amazing. Like literally incredible. Hats off to you, Carm. Um, if you need an assistant, you got me. If you need an assistant that can commentate, host. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you bring. You bring a lot. You're a triple threat. Could you triple threat. Now, Thank obviously, you. D, you um, have just retired. If, if anyone's missed our, our first one, you've retired since then. Um, now you are commentating. You made your debut on CBC. Literally so proud of you. I said it in our first episode that I was lucky enough to work with you both, um, more so D because she was in studio. Carm, you were actually at uh, mm -hmm. the event in 2019, the World Cup. But mm -hmm. just how quick you caught on. I remember the first episode or the first show, and you were like, "I'm so nervous." You literally scooted in on your scooter because you I think <laughs> it broke. You was it? You were in a cast or something by then. I don't mm -hmm. know what injury it was. I but just wanted attention. <laughs> she was actually fine. Yeah. No, she was no injury. There was nothing there. <laughs> But I remember that first show and you were so nervous and you literally smashed it, smashed it. So I'm not even sure if you were CBC and you're killing it. So tell us a little bit with what you're doing with them, how that came about, how you reached mm -hmm. out to them or how they yeah. reached out. Uh, I, I was a bit of a late addition given my, given my recent retirement. Uh, Claire Rustad's doing the color during the game has been amazing. I'm just doing some extra digital stuff. So mostly I'm on something called the extra hour on CBC. It's d digital. They, also, don't tell you when the show is coming up too well. Um, <laughs> but you can watch me there. Usually, it's the day of the game. So tomorrow, I'll be on at like 6.05, 6.10 on the extra hour at CBC Olympics. Nope. At CBC Olympics is their Twitter. Okay, and go since ahead I'm plugging and find it yourself. Show, I'm plugging, <laughs> I'm plugging it. that show. Everyone just Google it. <laughs> yeah, the source from here. Also on CBC, there's two great digital shows, The Extra Hour. They're both produced by women. And then the other one is RBC Spotlight, which is hosted by Anastasia Busis. And she's hosting current and former Olympians and has been doing great interviews. So they even do uh, the same job as us, telling us when that show is coming on. It's, it changes time because it depends when the athletes are available. But <laughs> have a look out for RBC Spotlight, Anastasia Busas interviewing people because she's been wonderful. I, I do want to say she's phenomenal. I don't get the coverage here in the United States, but my mom, that's like a diehard Olympian, literally, I, I don't even want to know how much Olympics she has recorded throughout the week when she works because every time I call <laughs> Saturday and Sunday, she's posted up in her bed with a bowl of popcorn and a glass of wine. We're very similar in that aspect. And she's like, <laughs> Oh, I just like, you know, I saw Anastasia. I saw all these people hosting. It's like former athletes. I saw Karina. Karina's killing it. She looks fabulous. I can't Aww. believe you had a baby. We're going to get to that because guess what? Karina LeBlanc is our guest later on in the show. Um, oh, should we get started so we're not as late as the Oh, yeah. Time? I mean, we're on track to be 50 minutes. Okay, okay let's, go. Okay, let's, let's <laughs> dive into it. Okay, so a quick recap. Obviously, Canada coming off a massive win versus Chile. 2-1. Janine Becky with the goals. Obviously, missed on the PK spot. First off, Carm, what did we make of this performance? Generally speaking, I feel like Canada is doing – they're very organized, uh, highly connected, all the things we expect. But at the end of the day, like – the, the honesty I would say is, you know, maybe those performances aren't, uh, maybe moments are inspiring, but I'd love to see this team sort of catch their feet like they did in, in almost in the World Cup where every game was just maybe a little bit better and they find their rhythm. And I think they still have a second gear, uh, third gear in their in their tank. And I just don't, I don't see the, the final acts being as exciting and the things that I think we wanted to see progress from 2019. I personally don't see it maybe leaps and bounds, but I still think it's in the tank. Nichelle Prince specifically, Janine Becky, once she decides, you know, like I'm going to go for this, which she did last game. Um, yeah. I still think they have more. What about you, Dean? Yeah, I think um, it, 
if it's going to be the same as 2012, we were pretty slow those first two games. Even the second yeah. one against South Africa, we didn't look that great. We won 3-1, but we weren't that great. So maybe similar. And then we really hit our stride in that third game. So hopefully yeah. the same for Canada. The the one for, thing for me, which I said also on the extra hour on CBC, uh -huh. Double is dipping. just the, um, <laughs> the reusing material. Just the, the crosses. We got a ton of crosses in. And then top tier opponents, we just got to be a bit better at picking someone out in the box and I yeah. think we'll be good. But yeah, definitely I'm looking forward to the next game because it's going to be top tier opponent. Like the, the Olympics so start now and I'm looking forward to it. Yes. And I don't know if uh, Janine Becky was watching our broadcast. Obviously Maddie guards in our comment section right now is saying this is by far the best broadcast ever. It's vodka, a vod video cast. <laughs> You're welcome everyone. Um, I don't know if Janine Becky may be tuned into it, but you, one of it, one of you guys said it. You said we need someone like Melissa Tancredi to step up and take mm -hmm. that pressure off of Christine Sinclair. And I think one thing I've always been hard on Janine Becky. I love her as a person. I love her as a player. I think she's fantastic. I think she has a huge future. But it was yeah. just having that confidence in that final third. Now, obviously, that PK she missed it, and I literally swallowed so deep. <laughs> I wish I could have been having a gin and tonic early in the morning when I was watching that match. Obviously, that's bad parenting and it's just maybe a bit too early. Uh, well, technically, it was yeah, it would be like coming out of a nightclub still. Um, but I, I was nervous in the way that I'm like, will this break her confidence? So do you think someone like Janine Becky moving forward where he's going to play a massive role in this Olympic Games of where they finish? I'll yeah. just start there. I totally think that the, those two goals, like people have been saying they're character goals more than just like just proving her resilience, what she's got left in the tank, um, that it's not going to derail um, her performance in any way and that she has a character that is, might take this team forward. And if she can continue that, it's all about this consistency. We know that she has to grow through the tournament, just like the team. So I feel like she can, she can do that. I feel like she has a bit in, uh, of that fire lit. Mm -hmm. As soon as she missed that PK, I feel like she was like, let's go. This is so annoying. <laughs> let's Dude, go. Dude, I want to talk to you about this as well, because the first thought that came to my head, I was, I was watching the coverage on TSN for the Euros, and she was on it, and she did a brilliant job. Um, yeah. But one thing she touched on was that moment in her career where she stepped up and missed that PK, and she mm -hmm. said it was the worst feeling ever. I got so much hatred. Do you think that played a little bit in it, come, stepping up to the spot yet again? Or do you like that she had the confidence. It was like, you know what? I'm going to try this again. It didn't come off. Like maybe not pointing it and looking at a Christine Sinclair, like you should step up and take this shot. Did you like that from her? Yeah, this is wild guesswork. Cause obviously I wasn't there, but I wouldn't have been surprised if, you know, sink at some point had said first PK we get you're taken just to get that monkey off yeah. her back, which I loved. And then I, yeah, I think that was a pretty huge moment in her career. So I think it wouldn't have been totally off her mind. Um, but yeah, I think um, she missed that one, but then the two goals are put her back on track. I like I like with Canada, we've just got a ton of options who could break out and be yeah. that option. Like someone like a Janelle Foligno got such a big goal in London and we have mm -hmm. options like uh, Evelyn, Deanne, Dre, like Jordan. Jordy. Like we got a long list of people who could step up and score a goal at any time. So we in good, I think we're in good shape and I don't, I don't know who it's gonna be. It could be lots of people. Okay, well, I'm gonna Come give on, you- <laughs> I'm gonna give you- give me Dre? My money's on Dre, but no, I do want to give you, I do want to say one thing because we had spoke about it uh, in between our broadcasts. Um, alternates, Carm, how big of a role do you see them playing? Now, D, you touched on it, and I love that you touched on it. You have to treat it like a World Cup in the rotation of players, as when you're prepping for games. So I had tweeted about uh, after the first match, and I had said the alternates are going to play a massive role. Carm, do you agree or disagree? Ha! Ah, oh my God, what a tough one. I honestly feel that uh, I would think probably Bev and her staff had come up with a plan as they do well before the decision was made to allow them to play. And I, I think they're probably going to be on the peripheral still. Um, I don't think they're highly likely to take time away from the players that they've been, you know, depending on and planning around the Nichelles, the Deanne Rose, you know, the ones that make those substitutions at the right, the 60th minute that we know Canada does. Like, I don't think they're going to take that away from the top 18. I really think they're going to be treated as alternates and it's not necessarily negative. It's just a strategy. I think it's just, they have to stick to it. My opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I think the one thing we were so much better in Rio 2016 in the last game than we were in London for two reasons. We had some kids with a lot more talent that helped us out a lot. 
And John <laughs> rotated. I feel like this is a dig at me and Carm. Is this a roast? Is this a roast? In, in comparison to you specifically. All right. Uh, okay, not that. The only reason was that John rotated his squad more. Like London, we play a lot of people play a lot of minutes. Rio, yep. he had a plan to rotate. We were fresher. I think, like, you know how it is. The Olympics is two days in between. It's not enough rest. It's not the four yeah. days we get in a World Cup. And you're better off if you can keep your players more rested. So I think I haven't coached yeah. a day in my life, seriously. So I haven't been through the work of making the game plans. But I would I would take it as a gift. I have 22 players to rotate instead of 18 and mm. keep some players fresh for sure. And I think she's she might be thinking about resting this GB game because, you know, your sinks and your desis um haven't rested too much yet and i think you're gonna have to rest them to have them play in the last game this is why you are my producer because this segues me into my next question i want to preview this see you guys technical difficulties and it was an absolute shite show our first episode we are flying <laughs> preview for gb um i'm gonna start with Carm. what do you think our predictions are obviously watching gb they look electric they look fluid in the attack they just look like they're firing on all cylinders i was actually i work for inter miami here in miami and phil neville being now the new men's coach here i spoke to him about it at training and it was like the coolest moment because he didn't ask me like the first thing i was like hey phil like i, I go usually one training session the first thing he thought said was who do you think is going to win the olympics and then he was so invested in like canada obviously we're going to touch on the coaching staff there but then just speaking about uh gb and just how threatening they could be he gave me some a little bit of insight but karma i want yours also going to go grab my charger because <laughs> this is just what we do Carm, go on give the people what they want yes you're out we're, we're in, in. Okay. No. Truly, when you when you think of Team GB right now, like she said, speed, uh, attacking uh, down the flanks, crossing, danger, so dangerous in the box, numbers in the box. Ellen White on absolute fire. Lucy Bronze, I mean uh, Nikita Paris, and then um, you know they just have tons of threats. Honestly, to the point where I think to everyone's point, this is going to be the game that's uh, that's going to be probably the most entertaining uh, for Canada specifically, especially with the background story of our dear friend Ryan Wilkinson knowing every single detail of this Canadian team and that factoring in to to the almost threat factor you know the perception that you have somebody on the other side that knows you inside and out but I think we could say the same thing with Bev it literally really is like the coolest story so ever. Cool. Like they just walked. <laughs> it was like Bev okay yeah now you're with Canada you're on a GB re you're with Canada you played for them for years and now first off I just want to say congratulations to Reed because the Definitely. one thing I will say about her, and this is why I did take a bit of your moment away there, Carmen. Apologies, but you guys have worked together, and I, I would love to see you guys reunite somewhere, somewhere in the world, because I think yeah. you guys balance each other so well. Both phenomenal coaches, both very different coaches. But one thing with Reed, when I first came into the national team, I was scared shitless of her because <laughs> like, you look at her and she just got this presence about her. But then yeah. now in that coaching role, I've really found and just like watching clips and talking to some players on the team that she's very good at man managing, which I think she's really progressed her game on where she didn't have that before because she was always like, I want it good. I want it. This is how mm -hmm. I want it there. I'm right. You're wrong. And now she's really transitioned to that game. So D someone like you looking at this match, what, what are you making of it? I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I think this is the first um, big game of the Olympics. I think um, they're footballers, hey? They're a fun yeah. team of footballers. who they, They've just grown up in that culture now. And you didn't, like if we played England 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't really like that. They were still playing catch up and now they're top team in the world. Like professional mm -hmm. league with investment. Whew, it, it yeah. made a difference. But um, um, <laughs> but, um <laughs> I think it's going to be a really good test for us. I think it's great. We're we're pretty much guaranteed we're already through. So we've got some wiggle room there and it'll be a really good test. They can switch the ball in a way that's much more direct and much quicker than a Japan or Chile. So it, that'll stretch our defensive shape, especially when we're in that diamond, which we know a, a switch can hurt it. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how that pairs up for sure and how we can defend against top, top wingers, fullbacks and forwards in the box, like you said. So it'll be a good test for us.
So I, I do want to say, or just ask one thing, because D, you had touched on resting players for this match, but do you not want to finish first in this group? Because the, the games are so wide open at the moment because of all the results everywhere. Your crossover, potentially, depending what happens on that other match, you could finish third in the group, which leads you to a very difficult game. So is this a game that they can even rest players? I know someone in the chat um, does agree with you, D. They said, uh, Clutch the Knight says, I do agree with Diana. They should rest, or I think some rest is key. But can you do it in a game like this? I don't think so. I don't know. This is a good debate. I mean, it's a healthy debate. But, okay, go on, D, because it was towards you. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you go. You go. Well, Carm, you go first. Carm, you go first. Can you, because D thinks you, you, you potentially could. Carm, do you agree or disagree? I, I think it's about connections and partnerships and I, I don't think you can put players on the pitch that you know might just be subbing in for like you said that rest and I'm not trying to demean Olympic minutes I'm just saying I think they're working towards something much bigger and any time away from partnerships on the pitch I think takes away from their effectiveness in future yeah. rounds so and I think they're built uh, robustly enough to deal with this tournament rhythm. I think that's the, the job of the sports science, te sports science team. And that's why you see substitutions made at the 60th minute on the dot. Like it's all planned, you know? And anyways, I understand about the rest. I just don't think it's tactically smart. Um, Karim, thanks for going first. I was just um, texting with Karina. She's in the background. <laughs> well, by the Sorry, way, you're you're sure. I can see Karina coming in and Paris is sitting on her lap. I literally Aww. watched Paris. She's so freaking cute. Karina. Paris has to make a cameo on her. So just, <laughs> we're coming. We are coming for you, but this is just what always happens. And Karina, by the way, we've waited for you for years. The amount of people been late to stop. So She's going to leave. She's going to leave if you're going to call it. You we go there and it's just an empty chair. No, I have um, a great intro for you, Karina. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> um, what were you saying? Oh, resting players. Yeah, um, yeah I think... Um, could you? I mean, I, I'll go back to what you said, Kaylin. Should you finish first, second, or third? I think, like, on the outside of this tournament, before Sweden upset the US, it was like yeah. second's the best. And that was pretty clear. I think it's a bit more up in the air now. I think you still want you want to finish first now, but it, I mean, still there can be upsets in the last game. So you never know. I think you rub it need in. to rest. I think you need to rest players at some point because Sink and Desi can't play the majority of minutes all the games and you expect them to compete at a certain intensity in the last game. I don't think that's physically possible. So you got to rest them sometime and you haven't yet. So you've got to this game. Yeah. Carm, question, I see you like this. Question for you. Did we, did we, did I lose the plot? Were we talking about the, the actual additions, the alternates or rotating? Cause I agree with you D, but just oh. not dipping into the alternates. That's oh, where no, I was talking about rotation for that GB game. Whether it, it's yeah. or not, like I, for me personally, I think you need your best eleven because I want to finish top of the group because it's an easier crossover now with the potential upset. Because yes, if that game was getting played before the Canadian game and the GB game, it'd be maybe a little. Well, you can't really throw a game because that'd be match fixing. So let's just call it no. space. Japan, but, no, Japan I, threw a game in 2012. They threw very a game true. and they made it to the final. Of course, there's gamesmanship. We shouldn't have beat. We shouldn't have beat Germany in 2016. We would have made it to the final. Okay. Well, I'm gonna clip this one and throw it on social media. Um, I do want to jump to our comment section because I love. It. I'm not saying to throw it. I'm I'm getting everyone's like comments in here, and we do have to move on because Karina has like a little bit of gap for us. So, and I don't want to yeah. keep her waiting too long. But uh, super super curly one in the name excuse me i don't want to be that guy but i think the three of you are a bunch of complete and absolute utter legends i thought that was going to go in a different direction me too <laughs> well, i thought it was too because you would you would read one that was just like digging us i thought it was going well, this, is, this is what's fun with going live all right um utter legends yeah. high five all the way from london uh a jedi council usually have lightsabers but you three don't need any you're already slaying <laughs> high five to you okay you three do, yeah anyways it's a, it's a big long one high five like to you it. as well thank you thank you um and thank then you. super curly one also said i think this gb your other one was too long to put on but this is this is the mm -hmm. the caption with her it's i don't know who you are but i think gb will win GB well will she win. makes a good point yeah or he <laughs> we don't know super curly. we don't know be just curly point. could be me uh -huh. actually and just yeah, put a couple more. So Canada only through, depending if they lose more than one nil, and depending what the score is, Japan and Chile game is right. The top two, who goes through? No, it's top three. Okay, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in quick there. So you're right. A third place team goes through, but the um, second group, which is F, 
is Netherlands, Brazil, Zambia, Chile. And Zambia no. No. plays Brazil and Chile plays Netherlands in the last game. So not I Chile, do not. Chile. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. China. 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 Oh, that yeah. was like in my head. Thank you, Carm. The drink is the other one. heading to you. Yeah. It's a five letter country with sort of Okay. So I don't like neither one of those teams is going to upset, I think. And they're on one point. So there's not going to be a third place group or a team in the second group. The third place team is going to come out of E or G. So we're pretty safe unless Zambia upsets Brazil. And they have had Barbara Banda scoring two yes. hats in a row for Zambia. Legend. Crazy. Hopefully that gets women's soccer on the map in that country. Yes. That's so cool. But I don't think they're going to upset Brazil. I do want to say this, digging this, but Canada did beat England 2-0 in April. Say okay. it again? Well, it's right here. Can you not read it, Carm? It's right in front of you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock over you, here. Are you sure you don't have Bailey's me? Okay, we need you know to move what? on. Move on. You know okay, what? On. No. This game that they beat them, it was excellent. Don't get me wrong. Karen Bardsley made a pretty grave error that I think she would, you know, never do again kind of thing. And then I also think that um, Team GB was resting a lot of their players. So that wasn't a true indication. I think people inflated that result uh, quite a bit. This is going to be the true test. Um, okay. Well, okay. Karina, I'm really sorry. I think Paris is sleeping on her chest at the moment. Quick, we got to um, rush through this. Okay. So this okay. is it. For segment two, doo -doo -doo -doo, commercial break. Don't have commercials, okay? Because we don't have a budget for that. Um, Not yet. I do want to touch on some harder uh, topics. Not harder, but just like dive in and bring awareness to them because that's what we're all about inclusiveness. We're all about, you know, women supporting women. And this beach handball team in uh, the Norwegian handball team, obviously, is getting fined for not wearing proper. Um, bottom for it they decided to come in like the slider so they're almost like look like tight shorts instead of like the a bathing suit bottom pink tweeted i am here to support you women kicking ass i will pay your fine for you love it again women supporting women karma i'm going to start with you what are we making of this why the hell are they getting fined in the first place who gives a shit if they want to come out in sweatpants am i wrong or am i am like, i wrong or am i wrong no I'm honestly wrong wrong. <laughs> Truth of the matter is, I'm going to go two directions with this. Number one, if somebody had asked me, Sepp Blatter, a FIFA president at one point said, we want women to wear tighter jerseys and short shorts, that would have been the dead end of my career because I would never have competed if that was literally made part of our culture, of uh, soccer culture. Okay, shorter, so that's something. Shorter yeah. shorts on my part, maybe, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> on me, absolutely not. Then, but then you think about the idea that, you know, what year is it and what the effect of culture of a sport on the expression of the athlete. So for example, even beach volleyball wearing absolutely nothing. I can't, I can't imagine diving around the way you have to perform the sport yeah. feeling that i don't know vulnerable like i wouldn't feel yeah, yeah. Like i wouldn't compete the thing is is like i feel like we were really well you guys are still very fit i was fit in my prime but like just like having my ass flapping about or my cellulite on a camera or a close-up of me like totally all that shit online if i'm gonna post yeah. it i'm gonna post it on myself i want to post my thong bikini on Miami Beach, when <laughs> I've, you know, maybe smoothed out my cellulite just a tiny, tiny bit of have that It's skin. vulnerable. It's but vulnerable. You know, it is vulnerable. You feel like, I don't know, I love it. I love that they are taking a stand. They're like, fine, as all you want. And I freaking love that Pink, because why wouldn't she, is standing up for what is right. Dee, what's your take on this? Yep, it's great. I think it's part of a, our larger movement to kind of point out all the, the BS rules that have perhaps been decided by a room full of men somewhere who maybe don't have the experience and the diversity in the room to make better decisions, historically mm -hmm. speaking. I think that's mm -hmm. fair to say. Um, so yeah, this Norwegian beach uh, handball team has got a lot of attention, which is fantastic and a good segue into other similar conversations. Um, there's, there's still women around the world who are banned from sport altogether because of clothing rules people have made up. The French Football Federation actually bans headscarves, which of course disproportionately affects minority women, uh, Muslim women. So like those, those are outdated rules. FIFA doesn't ban it anymore. FIBA doesn't ban it anymore because of great activist work. People, people say it's a, it's a safety issue, but it's one of those things where they say that based on what the people in the room think is true, not on 
any actual data, right. which is the problem in women's sports and the people make decisions for women, not actually based on data, just based on what the, the dudes think. Love it. Um, yeah. it is. It, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, we touched on the breastfeeding lot in our first segment and then there's just so many issues. So um, if any of you guys have anything you guys want us to discuss or touch on, comment in our uh, comment section or hit us up on social media, all of our platforms. Um, I'll throw them up on social media after if you want us to touch on those hard, hard conversations because I feel like us yeah. three, we've lived through it, we've gone through it. And I'm still learning. Like there's still stuff that sure. I'm going to reach out to people to ask the tough questions because I know I, I, again, I grew up in a white privileged family where I, you know, was blinded by a lot of things. I lived in Saskatchewan where those things weren't really prevalent. And so I've had to have those hard conversations with people I've played with or people from around the world. So again, there's no stupid questions. There's no, you know, feeling yeah. like, Oh, but what if I asked the wrong thing? Let's just, Talk about it. Talk about the hard conversations, which uh, doesn't really lead me into my next thing. But <laughs> well, actually, I, I, you know Karina's what? Gonna I, leave. <laughs> I have a I have a suggestion. Those are why don't we have Karina on for those and loop those in at the end and bring Karina in now? Would that work? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna bring. So we're gonna come back to this. So we have we created it. Well, Carm did actually. Uh, Carm, what is your segment for? We call it the Minute Man. Okay, so we're gonna come back to the Minute Man. Usually we do that in segment two, but we're running out of time and. Karina's literally so patient at the moment, and I feel bad because we're actually keeping her waiting for one. So we're going to come back to <laughs> NWSL recap because it's a fire of a season right now, 2021. The standings are so freaking tight. So I'm going to dive in, a deep dive into NWSL, just exactly what's going on, even without the national team players being there. And then we have the Minute Man, where we touch on Canada's men's national team, and then also just men's stuff from around the world. We're only giving them a minute, though, all right? So without further ado... <laughs> okay, Karina. <laughs> Hi, you all missed it. She was awake and she was like pointing at like, oh, this and, like uh, yeah, they said, uh, she's like, Jason, hey, come make a cameo. No, Karina, I love you. Wow. Jason, I have to say, you are the most kick ass father. Woo! Oh, well, we can't hear you because you got complimented. Frozen. You're being, yeah. she she is you're the, the best. Kick -ass I would agree. Carm He's, and D have seen him in person. Just so, come yeah. give us a wave, Jason, so people can put a name. <laughs> they need oh, you to come put, wave. Wave. Come. put your hand in. Come. Just put your hand in. Just just your hand. Hand. Hi, brother Jason. Hi. Brother Jason. Um, Do you miss so, all, all of you? I feel I, like I should have this done regular, but. But this is this is what it's all about. Like Karina, I want to say not only what you did as a player is phenomenal. So we can go across your accolades when you were a player, but it's what really you do off the pitch that makes you so special. Someone like myself that I knew I wanted to get into media, um, but you really paved the you paved a way in a lot of ways. Media. I mean, you're the head of the the Concacaf division for fee, for the women's division. You travel around the world. You're still doing broadcasting. You're with CBC right now. We're gonna dive into that. You're traveling with a kid, which I know that's very difficult to do, trying to talk about why you live in the bottle. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I'm sure at the end of the day, you're like, I deserve a bottle of wine. Drink it, girl. <laughs> Drink it. Um, but first off, obviously, congratulations on Paris. She's absolutely stunning. Look at her. Everyone just Thank take a little you. But you're Thank actually you're in Toronto now. right now with CBC uh, covering the Olympic Games. Correct. You're in Toronto, right? I, I know that. I am. I am in Toronto. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit. I, I do want to dive into that. How has that transition been? Obviously, you've been retired for a long time, like me and Karma. I threw us out of the bus last time. Sorry. Cheers, Kaylin. And then Dee's like, it was so much better in Rio without you. <laughs> yeah, and then Re and then I don't know if you caught that. Yeah, Dee said that I Rio was really better too. I caught this that is too. D, like a drink. Like, just take a chug of that. That was like, for it. Uh, she did okay. just say that. Oh, yeah, she did. It's okay, Dee. Chose, chose my words poorly. My my she, she's, she's, new, she's newly retired. Newly retired. She doesn't know how to use a word yet. Yeah. <laughs> but Dee does know how to rollerblade. Okay, we're gonna get to that in a moment in segment two because I haven't brought that up. But Carm or sorry, uh Karina. So for someone like yourself, obviously you came out of retirement. I know that you your goal is to have not your goal, but like Obviously, you're very successful with CONCACAF. You're changing the game in that way. But I see you in a role of like having your own show, like almost like an <laughs> Oprah, because you have the biggest spirit. 
You have the yep. biggest personality. You have the yep. best guidance. Anytime where I feel flooded, I'm like, I need to text Karina to be, I just need a little bit of guidance. I need someone to really level yeah. me and just tell me how it is. And that's why I'm, I'm selfishly and devastated you moved away from Miami because you were just a short drive away from my old place. But how have you balanced everything? Work, TV, motherhood, husband, traveling around the mm -hmm. world and living in the Bahamas during a pandemic where you haven't been able to see your family. And welcome, I'm by the way. My <laughs> I love you guys. I miss you all. <laughs> Um, I'm having the interview uh, with her in my hand, sleeping. That's how I've balanced it all. I think it's just finding the rhythm, but I just want to give you all a shout out because, I mean, I, I don't know. I would always have time for the three of you because of the human beings you are. And I don't even know. I think every day is just finding a new rhythm. Kaylin, you and I actually reached out to you about how can I be a mother and do everything. So I think I it's one. just being... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just being surrounded by incredible human beings like we, we were for so many years. And I think that's why people even connect to this show right now is because it's 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 engaging and everyone's getting to see what we do on a daily basis. So I don't know. I, I, I'm just kind of blushing. You can't tell from all the things <laughs> you've said. But I think at the end of the day, I think we all just, you know me, I'm super cheesy, but I think we all have a, a calling and, and something to do in this world. And that's just what I'm doing. I'm doing my part. Kay, you're doing your part. D, she's doing her part. Carm, C money, you're doing your part. And I think, I think it's, it's just that we just figure it out. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I wish we were in person, but for me, I'm just so happy to be Dude. here. And I can't wait for Paris to meet you all, most importantly. Yep. That's like uh, the best. Yeah, Kay, you're the only one she hasn't met. I, saying, I don't hashtag. honestly I don't want her to meet my household because Hayden <laughs> would literally be like I'm dating her and I'm three so like stay away from us as long as you can <laughs> is that possible so Karina tell us about your crazy CBC schedule you got like these 4 a.m. you're getting your makeup done at like two in the morning I don't know how you look as good as you do what's going on what's your tricks what's your magic I need to hear about this um who knows what my schedule is D knows I mean I think one day uh <laughs> You know, you're on the, the prime time and then you're on the good morning and then you're on the good <laughs> afternoon. I don't know. Give me a mic and let's talk about women's football. And I love it. You know, <laughs> I think this is this is what we do. This is what we're doing right here. It's just whatever context is going on. I just want to talk about the incredible women that are playing our game, what we're doing on and off the field. I mean, sometimes people just see what we do on the field, but this is a testament right here. Right. Like there's so much more to women than kicking the ball. And yeah. so for me, give me a mic and I'll talk about it. You gotta take the mic it. away. Be honest. <laughs> I love because I had my mom here um, two weeks ago, and we were sitting around yeah. wine, as we normally do. And she was like, "Remember the 2012 Olympics?" And she wanted to go into that. And I don't. There was something in me, and I said, "Mom, I'm so much more than the 2012 Olympics." Like, and she wasn't mm -hmm. having a go or anything, but I'm like, I feel like what we've done on the pitch is incredible. We've changed how people look at Canada and how we look at women's football, how we look at soccer in general. And Dee, you made a fabulous point on our first episode. And I completely agree. When I was rewatching it, I was like, that was a freaking good point. I couldn't name more than five players off our men's national team, or maybe that was Karma. I forget which one of you guys made that point. Probably and it, Dee, she makes the better points. But it, <laughs> I don't remember this either. <laughs> what point? It genuinely, it genuinely- Long story <laughs> short. Long story <laughs> short. Yeah, but it, 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 it wasn't any disrespect, but it was just, I feel like we've changed True. soccer in a better way in Canada and all around the world. And I think we're still progressing it to this day. I mean, D, working in TV, killing the game, Carm coaching at the highest level you possibly can imagine, and Karina doing everything. All right, do basically leading forty one countries. Leading, yeah, leading forty one countries. So, Karina, I do want to ask you. Um, obviously, with the women's side at Concacaf, what has been your biggest task that you've had to handle there? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, how much time do you have? We're trying to get under fifty minutes. <laughs> no, I Honestly, I think. Well, first of all, you just nailed it. I think it was just to show everyone in our confederation, the power of the game. You know, we have 41 different realities. What we see in North America, what we see in Canada is not the reality in some of the smaller countries. So I think for me, it was just, first of all, starting with the leadership of Victor Montagliani. We saw, we were in the locker room crying with him when he won the medal, right? That was the leader who cared about the women's game. 
And how can we get the different presidents and general secretaries for them to see that this is their legacy, right? It's not necessarily the men's game. It's what the women can do. But Kate, exactly what you just said right there, it's what these women will go on to do, right? They'll go on to be the presidents and the prime ministers of their country. They'll go on to be the CEOs. They'll go on to lead the community and you empower a girl, you empower the community. So I think I laughed because I was like, where do I go with this? But I think the biggest thing is just like what we know to be true. We are who we are because of this game. And it's helping others see this game is not game changing for scoring goals. And I think you, we've all had the conversation, even with the athletes that are in the Olympics right now, be like, this is a big deal. But to your point, this isn't the end. This is the platform for what all these athletes will go on to do. And we're living testimony of what this game can do, right? And every single day we support each other. We're like, hey, how do you need me? How can I show up for you? And how can you show up for me? And sometimes it's like, yes, let's grab a glass of wine. Let's have this conversation. Or maybe, Carm, we go to the beach and we just forget about like reality in life, right? Or D, in many different ways, D will, D's bringing over food for Paris. So that's how she's <laughs> in ways that nobody else can, nobody else will get. But I know every single person that was on that team or will be in this Olympics, through soccer at least, will go on to do things way bigger than the game. And I think that's what's happened with our 2012 team. Sorry, D. That's the team we want to talk about right now, okay? And and the thing is, is like I love that you made that point because one thing for me, being in the media side, it's a very tough industry. It's very cutthroat. It's very, you know, who you know, but also the the it's almost like the cattiness. I will say one thing that, and I, I I've never been super close with a lot of females. It's just not who I am as a person. It's just, I was very, you know, grew up with guys and got along better with them. One thing I will say, especially about you three, and I'm not even just saying this. I said it to my husband the other night. You genuinely want to see women succeed. You want to see women do better. You want to see them at that highest level. And I will say this about you, Karina. That is one thing that you have always done. Dee and Karma have always done that. Um, obviously, but one thing for you, you'll check in. And I think that's so important is to check in with people that you care about, but then also still grow the game. Karina reached out to me the other day and was like, what's your schedule like in the fall? We'd love to potentially do something with you with CONCACAF. And I was like, that was just like the nicest message, A, to even think of me, but on the bigger scale, because you genuinely want to see me grow in the media side. So like, and when you called me and told me you got the CBC thing, you're like, I know that like you want, and I'm like, no, I genuinely want to see us all fucking kick ass and be good at what we do and grow the game. I don't care who's in what role, but like, let's grow the game together. Let's be supportive of one another. Whether you're just coming out of retirement, you've been retired for a few years, Carm, we've had conversations. Like, I remember we had a conversation two or three months ago, like accept every offer that comes your way kill it and and show yeah you might not sleep for two years but show that you can literally <laughs> one on three anything. yeah but we can literally do anything we put our mind yeah. to thank god for freaking botox because <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah, i feel too. i feel i feel like i've been spoiled like from the media front like i haven't been full-time like uk so i think it's a bit different i've only sh i've only dipped my toe and showed up for like <laughs> No, big tournaments and then I peace out for the rest of it but like it's been so much fun for me because TSN was a ball because it was it's like fabulous. people I knew old teammates it was Kate Burness who was incredible and made it so easy on us and great producers and same with CBC now like I'm doing half this stuff with Karina I hate how I point the wrong way this way this I do half this never get it I, do ha I know oh nice I do half this stuff with Karina like um, I, I love seeing former athletes doing stuff now, especially women, former athletes, they speak about a game that is different and more insightful than the types of announcers we grew up watching, I think, who were uh, uh, more, they were different, right? Like even yeah, um, Britt Brit McLean was doing, is doing the swimming. She's on prime time and she's doing the analysis for that. And it's so interesting to hear her speaking about swimming and it's because I never think of that stuff or that one Raptors game they had oh it was all females. months ago and it was all female that was that was incredible I, I feel like I'm learning so much about basketball like hearing former women athletes talk about sports is like my favorite pastime yeah 
Our guests. Can I say something too? Yeah, yeah. raise your hand. Like yeah. I, I did, but like, but I think too, it's, it's like it's you got to see it to believe it, right? Like, and I, I always say this, whether it's representation of color. Whoa, that's a long message. Sorry, uh, it's too big. Island, it's too you, big. Can, you, you. Whoa, are you trying to throw me off here? Um, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's so you. you know what? Put it up again. Cover us all. We'll wrap it up. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, my back is in the background. So, Karina, you were saying, put Karina it back. Karina and up. then Parm. Karina and then Parm. Okay. Hey, Kay, you you didn't get it. I use this Carm's big. Long story short, or what is the other one? Tools in the toolbox. Like, tools yes. in the toolbox. Jam in the jam yeah, jar. Yeah. Jelly, jelly. In the yeah. Jar. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Anyway, so I just think it's important, like that you like you, it's important for people to see these athletes doing it, but it's important for this next generation to see women of color, I would say, or just women representing the sport and nailing it and having the confidence to do that. That's just as important as it is to see the athletes because everybody at home is not like, oh, okay, I'm going to be the next Olympian. But everybody at home is like, hey, I can be confident like that. I may look yes. like that. I can talk like that. And sometimes it's like, that's why you have athletes to talk about it because we know our stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. close your eyes. I can talk about goalkeeping all day. That's why I said to Dia, I was like, are we going to talk about goalkeeping? No? Okay. <laughs> You see, look at yeah. that. Like, see? Yeah. Come on. No. Best My favorite tweet in between our first and now our second uh, vlogcast was D calling Karina out about about speaking about goalkeeping on TV, <laughs> and I was dying. Yeah. Um, Let me guess. You're going to speak about goalkeeping. Yeah. Karina, I just want to say Can thank we... you again for everything that you're doing, not only what you did on the pitch, what you're doing off the pitch, growing the game, supporting women, lifting Did Carm have something to say? Carm, oh, it's okay. You, you know what? I'm getting used to this in this show. No, 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 no I'm go. kidding. I'm kidding. No. I'm, I'm happy. Keep going with the Karina no, bits. No, 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 I can no, talk no. about her for years. We, so we had a recap of our last show, and I said, what can I do better? And that was one of them. Stop cutting Parm off. Parm <laughs> that's new. It's been, that's, that's two decades worth of stuff. Anyways, uh, you know, I'm just going to have my love fest with Karina. You're here. You know, we've spent some good time together in the last little bit. And I've seen the hard work you do with CONCACAF. I've seen the how you pour into people uh, all over the region. And you know what? You're leading by example. You're changing perceptions, which is where we start. And you're doing that in 41 countries and leading the way with the other confederations. I'm serious when I say you are relentless. You're one of the hardest workers I've seen. And uh, we're our region is very lucky uh, to have you at the helm. So uh, I just want to share just from firsthand experience, you are a game changer. Oh, can we drink you. What are you make me cry here? Okay, yeah. Just telling you the truth. Thank you. Mom, I need Carm, to stop. Can I, just I need to stop basically cutting you off because that was 10 times. Well, that was better. that was quite that good. Was yeah. Good. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. need more calm in this show. Well, it's something to take back Super. to the producers. <laughs> I've talked to the producers and they agree. Um, but again, Karina, we won't keep you long because we know that you have a million and two things. And obviously Paris and Jason, we wish you guys the best in Toronto I and you. and when are we all getting together to actually drink in person is my next question. That has maybe my wedding reunion just saying are you Bahama? can i wear this Bahama. yale shirt to it <laughs> you know you, you can. can but can i just can i give you each all a shout out and just say you guys i shouldn't say no. you, guys, you all are yes, you the most to wrap up, incredible Karina. human beings <laughs> um carm i'm so blessed to have spent the last couple months through this pandemic with you d the last week has been a blast hey Let's make it happen. But most importantly, like this is awesome. I love this. I love the show. I love the vibe. I love have. I want to be back again. But just, just keep bringing nailing it because this recap show is dropping the mic. And I love you. Love you all. Do you? Love you, do you wanna? Do you wanna go? Do you gotta go, or you wanna stay for Kaylin's <laughs> one minute NWSL wrap up? It's oh, up let's to you. Do it. you gotta go. Okay. Oh, go. You know okay. what? Let's do it. Okay. So obviously. Um, I've been doing NWSL, I think, for like a year and a half now, and this is the first year I've done it from like start to finish. I did the, the Challenge Cup, um, which I'm all about the Challenge Cup. Some people are like iffy about it. I think it's fantastic. And especially, obviously, during the pandemic where games, they couldn't play games versus college teams because of like, obviously, everything due to COVID. Um, so they started a Challenge Cup. It was incredible. They did it in 2020, now 2021. And then it came to this season. The one thing I will say is the NWSL watching the games, it's starting to progress. Obviously, we had all played in it when 
we were trying to grow it. So Canada had given our, us our contracts to stay within North America to really grow the NWSL. Um, and then gave however many, I don't even know how many contracts to us, but I will say even I was a bit nervous with the national team players going away to the Olympics. Cause let's just call a spade a spade. Usually the, the, the quality drops, the tempo drops. I can honestly put my hand to my heart that that has not happened. And you look at the NWSL standings at the moment and other than Kansas city, now lots of stuff has gone on with Kansas city, the relocation of them um, from Utah to now Kansas, they have great ownership. Uh, they just made a massive, massive trade with Amy Rodriguez, Amy Rodriguez, uh, finding her way to North Carolina. They got two massive or three, excuse me, um, massive, uh, game changers coming over to he or to Kansas city, which I think will be a big one, but let's just jump into the standings real quick. Portland, 22 points. By the way, they're phenomenal. Mark Parson is going to take the Netherlands head coaching job. So he'll be gone at the end of the season, which I'm devastated about because of what he's done there. Mm -hmm. uh, Gotham, the rebrand of Sky Blue to now Gotham, which is incredible to say the least. I still am waiting on a jersey from them. 19 Can I just say, like, that is that is the story of how far good branding can take you. Like, yes. they were... New Jersey, Sky Blue, they played out of Rutgers. It wasn't, that's not very accessible. Well, like, wasn't very cool. there. Yeah, and then they like made it cool and Gotham and they moved the stadium and the, the people show up. Like branding matters. Branding mm. matters and coaches matter. So mm. when and finally we get a league of our own in Canada, all I'm saying is, wait, wait, how do I, yep. Yeah. There, there. Okay. Anyways. Uh, and then Chicago, Chicago has been like a bright spot, Washington, mm -hmm. like, and this, this is what goes to show in the NWSL. When you get good coaches in, it starts to turn around Washington sitting in third place. They've been phenomenal. NC courage. Obviously they're always really good under Paul Riley and then Houston, Orlando, Orlando started out really strong. have dropped the last four games. Um, they really struggled without their national team players, but Ashlyn Harris, five, Karina, you'll like this one, five back to back PK saves. Five. Holy moly. Losing my mind. Amazing. I said it once. I'll say it again. She should be on the Olympic team, whether it's within that 18. Well, now it's obviously not just the 18, but I think she should have traveled. Um, and then again, racing Louisville, like their, their, their branding has been incredible. Um, everyone's agreeing with you, D. Oh my God. The Gotham FC brand was so sick. Now, just quickly here, because we, we are running out of time. We're literally. Carm, Carm had something. Oh, Carm. Yep. Go. I want to make this comment. I think it's what started in 2013. So whatever the math is, ninth season, eighth season in, like it's taken this long to your point, Kay, to get this, Karina, where'd you go? It's taken I mean, this long sorry. Um, to get this league to be maybe as competitive as it is. And maybe this is an anomaly because, That's you know, true. there's a lot of uh, Olympians that are out. Oh, hello, can I say something? There's a lot of Olympians that are out, right? And then now they're uh, all these domestic players are getting a chance to step up and you're saying the level hasn't dropped, but that has taken a long time. And I think these, this league is growing into itself. There's expansions coming. That's what I'd love to see the organic growth uh, and investment and sustainable investment in the league. That is the key to this success because we weren't having these conversations in year one. No, year two, we, year three. we really weren't. Oh, and even, no. I will say on the production side of it, even with CBS and what they're doing and what they're doing behind the scenes, I know a lot of people bitch and complain that it's not good enough. What the money that they're putting into it and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes is like, honestly, second to none. And the producers, what we have. So I, as someone that works in the industry now, and I see the tweets and people on the commentating side, it really, it, it hurts me because we're not getting paid a lot to do it. I'm not doing it because of the paycheck. I'm doing it to grow the game. So when fans come at you for like minuscule thing, is that the word minuscule? Minuscule? Uh, anyway. Meniscus is in your knee. Uh, yeah, minuscule. minuscule. You're good. You're good. Oh, minuscule. <laughs> See, thank you. Things it like it annoys me to the point where it's like you're gonna push the good people away from commentating on games that genuinely yeah. are doing it because they freaking love the game. They want to oh. grow the game. So like, get on board and stop bitching and complaining because we're there to help you at the end of the day. Well so, said, Kaylin. Well said. You, now, Minute Man. Karina, are you staying on for Minute Man? Yes, you are. Sure. Can you guys hear me? Because when I when D and Carm talk, it's like wow. Well, we can Absolutely hear you your internet. It's your I, internet. I, I want to <laughs> record it because it's that funny right now. I, I <laughs> honestly am dying because it's like when Carm or D talk is like, wow. Maybe try, try your earbuds out. 
No, it's okay. hilarious. I need to record it. Anyway, okay, we'll have to wrap this up. We have to be done before the hour because that's just far too long. Um, okay, Minute Man, who wants to kick us off? Dee, do you want to kick us off with Minute Man? Yep, the oh. men's national team just beat Costa Rica in the Gold Cup, which means they go on to the semifinal. I mean, if you haven't... Karina, no. <laughs> Karina, we're going to kick you off the vlogcast, and it's your first time on, so get your stuff together. Go on. Kaylin, only... swipe her out. Kaylin, swipe her out. <laughs> no, you only have a minute to talk about men's soccer. This is in it. I know. They get 96% of the coverage. Just get one minute great. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to sell it as much as the one soccer commentating team, but you guys should follow this. You should follow this team. They're good. They don't even have their, like, top, top stars. They're a great team. Uh, semifinal against Mexico, 10 p.m. on Thursday. So watch. They've got a couple players out because they got a second yellow, but they're a great team. Put money on this team now and then let it ride through 2026 because they're fantastic, and I hope they know that. Because oh, yeah. yeah, women's soccer set us off, and then um, John's set his sights on the men's team now. It seems to be working. So we are in good shape for the future. By the way, John Herman will be on our next show at following the PB game. Yes, I pulled some strings. Sent there a text message and I was like, you're coming on the show and you can't say no because you left the women's team for the men's team. You said, okay, fine. I'll do it. Anyways, Carm, do you have anything on a minute men? No, I just, I just, I'm going to go on. I know people know me. I love John. We all love John, what he's done and uh, team chemistry, tactical excellence and team spirit. Like he'll bring that to any program. And that's why they're on the map. Not only because of the influence of him and his staff, but the golden generation. I think it's just this unbelievable uh, moment in time for Canadian football. And Karina has something to say. Go on then. Excuse no, me. I don't want to interrupt you, Carm. All right. So what I mean is um, I, I really do think that, you know, the, the work that he puts in to tear teams apart tactically, like the amount of detail and just it's just unbelievable. And he's shifted the culture into a brotherhood uh, in which you can see right here, the sisterhood that he's created with us. And I, he's not responsible. I'm not trying to, like, put him on a, a pedestal, but he, he does have an immense uh, impact on, on any environment that he's in. And it's just super cool to see on the men now. Go ahead. Put him on the pedestal. I will as well. Absolutely. He did what he's doing on the men's side, on the women's side. And let's not all lie. That's one of the reasons we're all here today because he helped to yeah. see it's so true. who yeah. we are and who yeah. we're going to be he in the world. So he did. Pedestal, absolutely. But And, I'm and I said it to him on the phone the other day. I was like, thank you for everything you've done for me. Not only on the pitch, but off the pitch. He was like the one that helped me get my foot in the door at TSN. So um, give credit where credit is due. Again, we have to wrap this up. We're just, we have literally like three minutes until this hits an hour. Karina, thank you so much for joining us. D. Keep killing it on the broadcast because I love my updates from my mom. And then, Carm, get some beauty rest, all right? Congratulations <laughs> to your first win as the head coach over there. Honestly, I'm not even yes, surprised. Yes, Carm. Um, if we want to tune in or, like, follow, like, live updates, is there any way we can do that for our fans tuning in right now? We'll put on your social media. You. For me? Yeah, you. Oh, yeah. It's in Danish if you can read Danish. <laughs> read <laughs> Okay. There's Google, no, there's Google Translate. It's fine. Then, put it out. Google Translate it. Follow, okay. follow my team, FC Norshalem. They are actually in actually serious. They're famous on the men's side. They have an academy that's around. It smells like it sounds. It's not Norway. It's FC Norshalem in Denmark. And um, anyways, yeah, you can follow. They're a famous club on the men's side. They've been selling players that they developed from the academy. Uh, Want to head there in the women's direction. So it's a big picture here. And uh, I would definitely them their neat club with a wonderful culture and that's why i'm here so yeah really cool amazing well thank you guys all for tuning in to wine and the tea with carm candy with a pleasure of a cameo from karina leblanc uh we're going to do a better job of letting you know when our next show is going to be after the gb game we'll figure that hey, out I, I want to be a guest when john's on so i can ask him ask john can i do that Okay, yeah, we'll bring you back, Karina. Yeah, we'll bring you back. We just got to figure out the screens, but you know what? That's what Google's for. Anyways, thank you guys all for tuning in. This show's all about you. Comment, like, share, whatever you have to do. I don't know the right terminology. If you have any questions for us, hit us up at Twitter or on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, social media, TikTok. I don't TikTok, maybe D does. Anyways, thank you guys again. Episode two is a wrap. One more thing. Question. No, we're done. Carmen. You can cut it afterwards, but... um. So Emma, my fiance, just asked if you can watch the streams, which I think is so cute of her. So what I would say is I will post uh, more streams of my games so people can tune in.
Thanks, yep. Emma. I would I like, love I asked love you, Emma. Everyone's saying great. Love you, Emma. Emma, bye. Ciao. <laughs>